Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be talking to you about what you need to know before you start getting into wearing wigs. So I wanted to come on here today and I wanted to really kind of take it back to the basics and the beginning. I know we have a lot of new people here, which is awesome. We're really growing, which I love. And I know there's a lot of people here who maybe are new to wearing wigs, are here because they're trying to find out more things about wigs. And um, if you're like me, I know YouTube is like so massive and so huge and so overwhelming. So we really try to have videos here for you guys that are what you need to know, explain it to you easily in one video, you feel like you can do it. So I wanted to kind of take it back to the beginning and really talk to you about the things that I wish someone told me I needed or would make it easier or just like just the fundamental things that I had to kind of go and try to find out myself or I would struggle for a while and I would finally find a product and I'm like, oh my God, why didn't I know about this before? And wigs can be overwhelming. I know there's some people here who probably are just here because they wear wigs for fun, which is totally fine. I'm sure even after I grow my hair back out or whatever, now that my hair is you know, healthier, I'm probably still gonna wear my wigs because I can't imagine not wearing them. <laughs> and I wore them when I had hair as it was you know, getting thin. So I'm, I'm gonna be one of those people at some point. There's also a lot of people here who are here because of hair loss for medical reasons or what, for whatever reason you're here, getting into wigs can be overwhelming, can be kind of crazy, can be like uncharted territory. So I wanted to start with, first off, some things that you should definitely make sure you have before you get your first wig. Most companies that I buy wigs from send you a wig cap. So wig caps are great if for some reason you aren't sure if they provide one, they're not expensive, you can go buy them from your local hair store, like any like Walmart, Target, places like that have them in the hair section. You wanna make sure you have wig caps. Wig caps make your life so much easier. If you have hair, if you don't have hair, the wig cap's gonna protect your scalp. If you have hair, it's gonna help keep your hair, you know, tucked in and not sticking out over the place. It's gonna keep your head more of like a smooth shape so your hair, wig doesn't look bumpy. Make sure you have wig caps. Make sure that you have variety and color. I didn't know that at first and I always thought it was a lot, like it looked noticeable that I had a wig cap on, it was because I wasn't using the right shade. So have a couple different choices. Amazon sells them, you can get them lots of places. Another thing that is really like a game changer, I feel like with wearing wigs, is a wig grip. Wig grips literally help just hold your wig in place. So you can wear this with or without a wig cap but it makes a huge difference with your wig sliding. And I didn't know about this at first and I always had that issue and I thought I was doing something wrong and I would spray my like wig cap to my head and do all sorts of crazy things. And this, I don't have to do that anymore and it makes a huge difference. The other thing you're gonna want is a wig brush. So you're gonna have to brush out your wigs a lot, especially if you are buying synthetic wigs. Synthetic wigs tend to tangle a little bit more. They also require a little bit more finesse when brushing them so that you don't damage the fibers of the wig because they are obviously synthetic. So a wig brush, Amazon sells these. I'll put the link for you guys down below. They're like super cheap, like six bucks, and it has these little loops on it and it's specifically made to brush a synthetic wig out without pulling and tangling it more. You can also use these on human hair wigs as well. It just specifically works really well with synthetic wigs. And this makes a huge difference on prolonging the wear of your wig before it starts to look like you can't wear it anymore. The next thing is before you even go to buy a wig, go and buy a cheap measuring tape and measure the circumference of your head. Wigs come in different sizes and those sizes matter. It's like buying shoes. So you don't wanna buy a pair of shoes that are two sizes too big cause you're gonna look ridiculous and you're gonna probably fall over yourself. This is super easy to do. You literally take this here and you're gonna go around here. I find I get a better measurement if I actually come down to the nape of my neck. Like I tell people do it both ways, see what the measurement that you get and then you can you know, gauge by how they have their sizing on their website, which measurement they're using. And that's gonna save you from having to buy multiple different wigs until you find one that's not too big, not too small. So the next couple things, these are all things that I recommend for installing a wig, which is, you know, something that you might not do at first. I do a lot of more throw and go wigs. I don't really usually tend to actually install my wig 
like with glue or anything like that, but there are products that make it way easier to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you those products. Got to be, got to be, got to be. I'm sure if you look up any video on how to install a wig, probably 99% of them are gonna talk about this brand. Got to be glued blasting freeze spray, which is funny. My sister used to use this to like spike her hair in middle school. Who knew it was also great for wigs, but the got to be freeze spray and then the got to be spiking glue. And they also make it in a black bottle, which is waterproof. Well, it's supposed to be sweat proof. So it's a little bit stronger. These are going to be so much easier for you to install your wigs. If you have these two items before you even go to watch a video, um, I do have a video on installing wigs using these and we can link that there for you guys. So you can check that video out. Um, but these are kind of must haves. And then the next couple things I have here are things that are gonna help make your wig look more natural. They're gonna help make your wig last longer. They're gonna help make your wig look more like your hair and not make it look so wiggy, which I know can happen a lot. You get a wig and you're like, wait, I look like I'm wearing a wig. I cannot leave the house like this. Everyone's gonna know I am wearing a wig. Like I feel like a clown. So there are a lot of things that you can do to make yourself not feel so much like that. And part of it is just being prepared and knowing that you're gonna have to mess around with a wig here and there to kind of get it to look the way you want it to. So the first thing you're gonna wanna have is a dry shampoo. This is super important, depending on where you're buying your wigs from. So like I buy higher quality, heat safe, synthetic wigs. They tend to not have that wiggy shine, but I've bought wigs from other companies. I've bought wigs from Amazon before and they come in and they look a little, they look plasticky, like they have a shine to them. If you have a dry shampoo, you can fix that problem in five seconds and you're gonna feel way better about it. Canteen makes one, Aussie makes one, you know, Amica makes one. If you're doing it on a darker brown wig, you can buy the Batiste ones, they have colored ones. You, anyone that you want or anyone that you prefer is fine, but they are gonna get rid of that kind of wiggy plastic look and they're very inexpensive. So dry conditioner is um, amazing, especially for synthetic wigs, but also for human hair wigs as well, especially if you're not wanting to have to wash and restyle your human hair wigs. And it's also going to work really well with synthetic wigs because synthetic wigs don't absorb things like human hair wigs would. It makes it feel softer, it makes it less tangled, and it smells good too. So it gives you like that fresh washed my hair smell, which I feel like adds to the illusion that this is my hair and not a wig. But um, these are great, lots of brands out there. Two that I always recommend are the dry conditioner waterless, which Target carries. And then if you want to get like a, this is, this one I buy from Sephora, so it's a little bit more of a pricier brand, but um, Amica is, it's a great brand. And this one, I they both smell great, but this one I love, love, love the smell. So I kind of pay extra for the scent of this. But either one works really well as far as what they are meant to do. It's just a preference or of what you'd rather buy. So a couple things that you want to make sure you have if you are wanting to make your wig look more natural is going to be concealer. You probably have a concealer at home already. You want one that's going to match your skin tone. So I don't know if you're like me and you use like a lighter concealer under your eye than your actual skin tone to help brighten it up. You might want to find one that's a little closer to your skin tone instead. But you're going to be using this to literally put a very small amount on the part of your wig, which is going to help make it look more like your scalp. This is like the number one thing I recommend to somebody if they feel like their wig doesn't look natural to them or they're seeing the knots of a synthetic wig. I'm always like, did you put concealer on the part? This is something you wanna kinda do. I probably do this with every single wig, even if it has an amazing part on it, just because I'm so used to doing it. And then I like to use like an eyebrow brush, but something very, very small, very flat is what you're gonna wanna use to really kinda paint that on. I paint it on, on the inside of the cap and then I also go through on the top part of the cap as well. You're gonna wanna have scissors. I really recommend getting like the small ones that come in like the nail care kits or the sewing kits. Um, you want them to be sharp. You wanna have something like this so that you can cut the lace off of your wig. If you're buying lace front wigs, you're gonna wanna have this. Also, if you're buying hard front wigs and you're wanting to make your hard front wig look more natural, you're gonna need a pair of scissors like this to do that. I have a video for that as well. I can link that there for you guys if you are buying hard front wigs, which a lot of people do. You're gonna want these scissors as well. So no matter what, I would go and get a pair of these scissors. And then you're also going to want to have a pair of tweezers. Tweezers are super important when you're trying to make a wig look more natural. You can pluck, 
you know, the hairline cut the part. You're gonna wanna have tweezers. You're gonna want them to be a flat tip tweezer. I like these really small ones that I think I got in a little manicure travel set, but any are fine. Make sure they're not pointed. And I think that's it. That's really kind of like the fundamental things that I would say you should have, you should know about before you go and buy a wig. And one other piece of advice I give you when you're buying your first wig and you go home and you're getting ready to put it on, do your makeup, put on something that you love to wear, set yourself up so that when you put this wig on, you feel bomb. You are probably the only person that is going to notice that it's a wig. People aren't gonna be close enough to you to stare at the little dots on your hairline. Don't stress out about it, just have fun. Um, the last piece of advice I wanna give you um, that I probably should have mentioned earlier is when you're purchasing a wig and it's the first wig that you are purchasing, um, I always recommend going with a lower density wig because that's gonna be the most natural. So like our hair is naturally closer to 130% density. So if you're going and trying to buy a wig that's gonna be 150% density, you're gonna feel like you have a big, huge like rug on your head. You're gonna feel really weird. It's gonna feel heavy. So I always recommend looking at like the 130s. It's a nice curly wig, maybe 140, but I wouldn't go past that because you're gonna probably get discouraged with the amount of hair that you have on your head if you go to the 150s. That's more for, you know, seasoned wearers or people who really want that big, voluptuous hair, which I'm not gonna say I don't have 150s in here, but majority of them are 130s. So that's just what I'm comfortable with. That's what I'm used to. And I want them to feel real to me. But other than that, I think that's pretty much it. I hope this helped. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you found any value in this video, give me a like, I'd really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for joining if you are new and we will see you guys on the next video. Oh,